Saint Augustine commentary on the Gospel of John chapter 7 verse 19 to 24 following. Perhaps indeed that circumcision pointed to the Lord himself at whom they were indignant because he worked cures and healing. For circumcision was commanded to be applied on the eighth day. And what is circumcision but the spoiling of the flesh? This circumcision then signified the removal of carnal lusts from the heart. Therefore, not without cause was it given and ordered to be made in that member, since by that member the creature of mortal kind is procreated. By one man came death, just as by one man the resurrection of the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 21 And by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 Therefore every man is born with a foreskin, because every man is born with a vice of propagation, and God cleanses not, either from the vice with which we are born or from the vices which we add thereto by ill living, except by the stony knife, the Lord Christ. For Christ wore the rock. Now they used to circumcise with stone knives, and by the name of rock they prefigured Christ, and yet when he was present with them, they did not acknowledge him, but besides, they sought to kill him. But why on the eighth day, unless because after the seventh day of the week, the Lord rose again on the Lord's day? Therefore Christ's resurrection, which happened on the third day indeed of his passion, but on the eighth day in the days of the week, that same resurrection it is that does circumcise us. Here are those that were circumcised with a real stone, while the apostle admonishes them. If then you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, which where Christ is, sitting on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 he speaks to the circumcised. Christ has risen. He has taken away from you carnal desires, evil lusts, the superfluity with which you were born, and that far worse which you had added thereto by ill living, being circumcised by the rock. Why do you still set your affections on the earth? And finally, for that Moses gave you the law and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath day, understand that by this is signified the good work which I have done, in that I have made a man every wet whole on the Sabbath day, because he was cured that he might be whole in body, and also he believed that he might be whole in soul. Judge not according to personal appearance, but judge righteous judgment. What is this? Just now you who by the law of Moses circumcise on the Sabbath day are not angry with Moses. And because I made a man whole on the Sabbath day, you are angry with me. You judge by the person. Give heed to the truth. I do not prefer myself to Moses, says the Lord, who was also the Lord of Moses. So consider us as you would two men, as both men. Judge, judge between us, but judge a true judgment. Do not condemn him by honoring me, but honor me by understanding him. For this he said to them in another place, if you believed Moses, you certainly would believe me also, for he wrote of me. John chapter 5 verse 46 But in this place he willed not to say this, 
himself and Moses being as it were placed before these men for judgment, because of Moses' law you circumcise even when it happens to be the Sabbath day, and will you not that I should show the beneficence of healing during the Sabbath? For the Lord of circumcision and the Lord of the Sabbath is the same who is the author of health, and they are servile works that you are forbidden to do on the Sabbath. If you really understand what servile works are, you sin not. For he that commits sin is the servant of sin. It is a servile work to kill a man on the Sabbath day. You do eat and drink, to infer somewhat from the admonition of our Lord Jesus Christ and from his words. At any rate, why do you eat and drink on the Sabbath, but because that what you do pertains to health? By this you show that the works of health are not in any wise to be omitted on the Sabbath. Therefore, do not judge by person, but judge righteous judgment. Consider me as you would a man, consider Moses as a man. If you will judge according to the truth, you will condemn neither Moses nor me. And when you know the truth, you will know me because I am the truth. It requires great labor in this world, brethren, to get clear of the vice which the Lord has noted in this place, so as not to judge by appearance, but to keep right judgment. The Lord indeed admonished the Jews, but he warned us also. Them he convicted, as he instructed. Them he reproved, us he encouraged. Let us not imagine that this was not said to us simply because we were not there at that time. It was written as it is, it was written, it is read. When it was recited, we heard it, but we heard it as said to the Jews, let not place ourselves behind ourselves and watch him reproving enemies while we ourselves do that which the truth may be prove in us. The Jews indeed judge by appearance, but for that reason they belong not to the New Testament. They have not the kingdom of heaven in Christ, nor are joined to the society of the holy angels. They sought earthly things of the Lord, for a land of promise, victory over enemies, fruitfulness of childbearing, increase of children, abundance of fruit, all which things were indeed promised to them by God, the true and the good, promised to them, however, as unto carnal men. All these things made for them the Old Testament. What is the Old Testament? The inheritance, as it were, belonging to the old man. We have been renewed, have been made a new man, because he who is a new man has come. What is so new as to be born of a virgin? Therefore, because there was not in him what instruction might renew, because he had no sin, there was given him a new origin of birth. In him a new birth, in us a new man. What is a new man? A man renewed from oldness. Renewed unto what? Unto desiring heavenly things. Unto longing for things eternal. Unto earnestly seeking the country which is above and fears no foe. Where we do not lose a friend nor fear an enemy. Where we live with good affection without any want. We are no longer any advances, because none fails, where no man is born, because no man dies, where there is no hungering nor thirsting, where immortality is fullness and truth our aliment. Having these promises and pertaining to the New Testament, 
and being made heirs of a new inheritance and co-heirs of the Lord himself, we have a far different hope from theirs. Let us not judge by appearance, but hold right judgment. Who is he that judges not according to the person? He that loves equally. Equal love causes that persons be not accepted. It is not when we honor men in diverse measure, according to their degrees, that we ought to fear lest we are accepting persons. For where we judge between two and at times between relations, sometimes it happens that judgment has to be made between father and son. The father complains of a bad son, or the son complains of a harsh father. We regard the honor which is due to the father from the son. We do not make the son equal to the father in honor, but we give him preference if he has a good cause. Let us regard the son on an equality with the father in the truth, and thus shall we bestow the honor due, so that equity destroy not merit. Thus we profit by the words of the Lord, and that we may profit, we are assisted by his grace.